Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and today we'll be cooking our 14th consecutive turkey recipe. Now nah, I'm messing with you. Let's make some smoked ham. That's right, today we are going to get into a smoked fresh ham. Now, a lot of you guys have probably cooked cured hams. It's a little bit different. It's almost just like reheating on the grill, which can be really tasty. But what we're gonna do today is a smoked fresh ham, and it's a beautiful ham from our friends over at Heritage Farms, Cheshire Pork. It's this beautiful steamship ham, big old 14 pounder. Now we're not gonna fully cure this ham, but I do wanna give it some time in a brine. So that's gonna be step one. Get it in the brine, add some Christmassy spices, lots of nice holiday flavors. Then we're gonna smoke this baby, make up a really tasty, sweet and tangy glaze to finish it off. Now we're gonna be using the Butcher House brine by Cattleman's Grill today, which is a fantastic brine by itself, but we're actually gonna personalize it with some holiday spices. So we've got some spices that we wanna to toast off, starting with our cinnamon here. I'm just gonna crush that down throw it in a dry skillet. A couple sticks of cinnamon. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of cloves. We've got a tablespoon of fennel seeds and a teaspoon of crushed red pepper. So we're just gonna let this warm up. Once it becomes kind of aromatic and those spices get toasted, we're gonna add some water. Now we're doing a 10 quart batch of brine today. That's two bags. 10 quarts of liquid. Well, we're just gonna start with six quarts here in the pot as we bring all those spices up and really start to infuse that flavor in with the brine itself. We're also gonna add some orange peel and then we're gonna take that hot liquid and pour it over a gallon's worth of ice. And since one gallon of water weighs about eight, just a little more than eight pounds, we're gonna be using a little more than eight pounds of ice to cool it down. All right, we're getting a nice toast on our spices here. They become very fragrant now. So I'm gonna add some water. And then we're just gonna get the outer part of this orange here, that really fragrant orange part will leave most of that pith behind. And we're gonna throw this in the water so that as it comes up to a simmer, it really starts to release its oils and its fragrance. And since we've got the orange here, we might as well just go ahead and add the juice as well. Now our butcher house brine has some great flavors in it already between the onion and garlic, so we're not gonna need to add any of that extra savory stuff. Now I'm just gonna cover this up, bring it up to a simmer. All right, so now that this is nice and hot, I can smell those spices have really opened up. We're gonna transfer this over to our briner bucket. Before we add the ice, we're gonna add our brine base and whisk that to dissolve it a little bit. Man, that smells incredible. All right, so just a little whisk and we're gonna go in with our ice. That should cool things right down. So we don't want to add our ham to a hot brine because that'll start to cook the outside. So instead we add the ice and I can feel just from the outside of the bucket that this liquid is now chilled down, just like that. All right, so let's take a look at our ham. Here we have the Cheshire pork from Heritage Farms big old 14 pound steamship fresh ham. They've already Frenched this bone for you up top. So you get this great presentation bone that the H bone's been removed, which makes things even easier to slice. We really don't need to do anything to this. They, they do it all for you and you can actually go to their website, just have it shipped right to your door. I'll give you guys a link in the video description. We're gonna plop that down into our brine. Grab the plate and lock it in place. Arrange this just right. I have that bone popping out the top. There we go. So the meat's fully sub submerged, just a little bit of that bone popping out the top, that shank there. 
Now again, we're not going for a full cure on this ham, but we are gonna give it a good brine because as that brine works in, we're gonna get some of that flavor worked into the meat. It's gonna start to open up the cell structure and add some salt to the meat itself. So I'm gonna say an hour and a half per pound on a 14 pounder, that's about 21 hours. So we're gonna let this sit in the fridge until tomorrow. Well, good morning, y'all. It's time to pull our ham out of the brine. Been soaking all night long and even raw. Smells amazing already. Well, the surface has firmed up just a little bit. Of course, it's very cold. Colors change slightly, so that tells us we're, we're seeing a little action on the surface. Now, you know, we didn't do any trimming on this. It comes all trimmed up in this netting, and to really help it hold its form, we're gonna leave it in the netting for the majority of the cook, at least until we go to start and glaze at the end. So we're just gonna take the excess moisture off the surface. We can leave a little bit behind because that'll act as a binder for our rub. And speaking of the rub, today we're using the Plowboys Yardbird Rub, just a fantastic barbecue rub. And that's gonna kinda be the seasoning base here. We'll go fairly liberal with the seasoning, give it a good coating because there's a ton of meat here. So we've kind of got those holiday spices, the cloves, the cinnamon, all that stuff going on in the brine. We're gonna complement that with this barbecue rub, which has got just a little bit of sugar in it. It's got some salt in it, some chili, and of course this beautiful red color. Kind of swipe up anything left behind on the table. And this should be looking moist on the surface pretty quickly here. That's all we're really looking for is to make sure the rub has attached to the meat. But we'll give this just a couple of minutes and it'll be ready to go on the smoker. Today we're gonna be cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS1500S. It's the big boy and we really love the way that it emulates an offset smoker. Speaking of that smoke, we're gonna be getting some really nice cherry wood smoke on it today as well as a little bit of pecan mixed in. We're gonna go about 50-50 on those. All right, we've got the Yoder running at 275 today. Put this guy right here in the center, and then we're going to grab our probe. We want to go to the deepest part of the meat, but not on the bone. And that's where we're going to monitor the temperature. Now, for presentation's sake, I want to keep this bone from getting all charred up. So I'm going to take some foil and wrap that around the outside there to keep it from getting too dark. At this point, we're just gonna treat this thing like it's any other big barbecue meat. It just needs some time to soak up the smoke, start to get some really nice color on it. Remember, we're not cooking a cured ham, so this is gonna behave much more like a pork shoulder or something like that. Now, we're gonna be cooking it to slicing temperatures, not at pulling temperatures, but we'll get to that in a few hours. We're about seven hours into the cook on our smoked fresh ham now, and I wanna show you guys what it looks like. It's looking really beautiful on the outside. We're at 160 degrees on the internal temperature, so we're starting to really break down some of that fat inside of there. But what I wanna do now is I wanna mix up our glaze and paint the outside of the ham. So check out the color, great bark on there. It's feeling pretty tender. Lots of juices getting released. Before we put our glaze on this thing, I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut this net off so that we, have, we don't have to glaze over the top of it. Try and do this gently so we don't damage any of the progress we've made on this bark. Uh-oh, that looks like a little snack fell off. Ooh, it's gonna be good. Well, that leaves a pretty cool design on there. And this thing's held together really well, held its shape nicely. But the netting has done what it needs to do, so we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna mix up our glaze. And I'm gonna start with one cup of our House of Q Slow Smoke Gold Mustard Sauce. I'm gonna add to that about a third of a cup of wildflower honey. I'm also going to do one third cup of our smoked maple turbinado sugar. So adding a little more smoke and getting that maple element. And this turbinado is going to add a really cool textural element because we're not going to melt it down. We're just going to let it be kind of chunky on the surface there. All right, so tangy and sweet should go perfect with our ham. So I'm going to start on the bottom side here.
kind of covering the whole surface. And what's going to happen is the sugar in this glaze is going to start to caramelize and tack up on the outside as this ham continues to cook to give us a really great, sweet, sticky finish. Boy, that looks and smells fantastic. Let's just close it up and let it finish cooking. Well guys, we've come up to 175 on the internal temperature now. It's taken about another hour. But this thing is ready to come off. All right guys, our ham has now rested. Uh, we give it about 20 to 30 minutes to rest and during that time, what happens is all of the juices that have run to the center during the cooking process are allowed to redistribute out to the end so that you get a nice juicy slice no matter where you're slicing. You want to make sure to get that foil off of the bone so it doesn't end up in your food, but look how pretty that is. Just a beautiful ham. And because that H-bone's been removed, we can actually slice this pretty easy. Using this shank bone as a handle, you can slice right down, follow that bone. Oh man, look at those juices. And then just start carving slices out of here. Wow, look at that. So juicy in there. Incredible. And that aroma. I mean, it's super tender. Easy soft bite through. The texture is totally different than a cured ham. It's definitely much more like a fresh shoulder or something to that effect. And that flavor is incredible. It's just the right amount of salt. It's not over salted. And the sticky finish on the outside, that's the sweet thing that you need to finish it all off. Look at those juices just moving while we do our slices here. Beautiful. Man, that bark. That's a fantastic texture. And we did right by the hand by brining it, adding extra moisture to the center. But obviously you can't drive all of that flavor all the way to the center, so that outside, that sticky glaze in the bark is the star of the show. I mean, you're really marrying the worlds of barbecue and Christmas ham. It's fresh, so it reminds you of barbecue a little bit, but we've added those touches like the clove and cinnamon that you just pick up on the outside from that brine, and then the mustard and the sweetness from the honey. It's the barbecue ham special. Doesn't get much better than that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.